So I made 50% over the weekend, but there was a morning panic dip by where you could have made 50% uh, in like 13 minutes. So there were two ways uh, to really profit off that, but weekend plays, I'm gonna give more leeway to. I'm gonna give it more time. What's up, Tim Sykes Millionaire Mentor and Trader here. Um, another section from this webinar that I am giving with my challenge students. If you click the links below, uh, we're gonna post links to the other sections so that you can basically feel like a challenge student. If you actually click the first link below, you can apply for my challenge. This is where all my top students come from because they get two, three, four live webinars per week and access to all the archives. There's now over 1,500 archive webinars, hugely useful from me and all of my top millionaire students, literally almost every single millionaire student has given a webinar. Tim Grittani, for example, who's turned 1,500 now into over 13 million, amazing guy. He's given over 70 webinars, all access for challenge students, all archived. Live webinars, Q&A webinars, watch June 30th, 2020 specifically. That's where he made 300 grand in a day. I asked him how he's gonna celebrate. He gave a challenge webinar. I love it. That's the community that this is all about. It's not just, oh, how do we make so much money? It's how do we grow our knowledge account? How do you speed up your education? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a pattern that's been working very well for me lately. First green days, over the weekend plays, just had a nice $7,000 profit uh, on AXTG a few weeks before, uh, a $5,000 plus profit on CLNV. It doesn't work all the time, but these are low stress trades because the stock market is closed over the weekend. So this strategy is specifically better for people who are busy, who might not be able to day trade all the time, and I think that's useful. Use the stock market to increase your life in any way possible, whether you wanna trade full-time, part-time, do some combination, but you gotta study up. Never forget 90% of traders lose. Click some links below, apply for my challenge, check out other sections from this webinar. Thank you to all my challenge students. Leave a comment below too. Do you like first green days? Do you like holding over the weekend? I do, but I'm curious what you think. Study up. Let's talk about first green day and uh, weekend plays because this has been working very well for me. Um, you know, I have the, the separate newsletter uh, for weekend plays now. Why is it separate? I get a lot of questions. Because the rules for holding a play over the weekend are very different than intraday um, trades. You know, a, a, a good example was AXTG where, you know, this stock basically was, was spiking on a Friday and I was in at eight cents and, you know, it was hanging around nine cents. Uh, at around 3 p.m. on that Friday afternoon, and I was about to lose Wi-Fi. I'm traveling around, I got meetings galore, and I had the choice, and I had 175,000 shares. I was up basically $1,700, $1,800. If this was not a weekend play, and it was just a normal play, it wasn't breaking to new highs, it was just hanging around 9192. Nine, if it was a normal play, I would have taken the $1,700, $1,800 because that's like my average trading profit over 20 plus years if you look through all my trades. But it was a Friday play with a news catalyst. I thought that it could keep going. I, so I, I swung it. And usually I don't do that. Usually I like locking in profits. Um, had no Wi-Fi the last hour of the day. I was very pleasantly surprised when I did get Wi-Fi to see it had broken out past nine to 11. I'm also thankful that I wasn't there um, you know, with Wi-Fi, because even if I had been there, I probably would have sold half at like 10 or 10 and a half, because I didn't think that it was that volatile of a stock. Um, but you know, even with the markets down big on Monday, I mean, it gapped to 12 where I sold it. It was actually a better dip buy here at 10. Within 15 minutes of it hitting 10, it also nearly hit 15. So I made 50% over the weekend, but there was a morning panic dip by where you could have made 50% uh, in like 13 minutes. So there were two ways uh, to really profit off that, but weekend plays, I'm gonna give more leeway to. I'm gonna give it more time. Um, and that's, that's what I like. Like I, you know, 20 plus years, my first $100,000 profit was on a weekend play, ISCO. Um, when I was on below deck where I made 70,000 on EKSO and I had cameras in my face, no Wi-Fi aboard the yacht and I'm calling in the order, that was a weekend play. I could give literally hundreds of examples of weekend plays. Um, so they've been really working. You know, I made nearly seven grand on that AXTG, sold it too early. Uh, CLNV a few weeks ago, same kind of weekend play, 
Uh, I made a few thousand, sold that one too early. I made like 30% and it turned out to be a 60% runner. Um, so I like weekend plays because the market is closed on the weekend and if a stock with the right chart has a news catalyst on a Friday, it tends to spread over the weekend and keep going. Any questions about weekend plays or overnight plays? I'm here to, to answer that. Again, the, w the way that I find these plays, the way that I find promoted stocks, the way that I find news catalysts, it's all stocks that trade breaking news. Every single one of you on this webinar should be using Stocks to Trade breaking news every single day. It's the single most revolutionary tool created for low price stock traders. And yes, I'm an investor in Stocks to Trade, but I'm also a customer. And the reason why I've made roughly a million dollars each of the past two years, yes, the market is hotter. Um, but I also have Stocks to Trade breaking news, which I never had before. So I'm able to find promoted plays, I'm able to find plays with catalysts, and I'm able to prepare sooner than before. How do I determine the news could have legs over the weekend? So, um, good question. You know, you never know 100%, but like uh, AXTG, hold on, why, why are my shorts falling off? Can you see my butt? No. Okay. <laughs> trying to ice my leg and my shorts are falling down. Um, you know, AXTG is, had the Friday news of a new NFT. Uh, I believe it was like Babe Ruth and Roger Maris baseball as an NFT. They're going to create more NFTs. NFTs are hot. So pretty much any stock that's a big percent gainer with a, a, a seemingly important piece of news on a Friday theoretically has, you know, the, the room to run and can keep going. I didn't think AXTG would go to 15. You know, in my alert, I said when I bought it in the eights, I thought it could go to the nines, tens, or elevens. So I underestimated it. Uh, Dan Wexler says breaking news room in stocks to trade is well worth it, the best, in fact. It's not even about the best versus the worst. It's, you know, I, it's funny when people like criticize it in any way. It's curated news for low price stocks. Nobody else does that. You know, you can go and look on businesswire, newswire.com, prnewswire.com. Um, you can try to look at all the press releases, but you're just not going to be able to curate it as effectively as, as stocks to trade breaking news. Here, can you hold my laptop for a second, Pascal? I got to pull up my shorts. I'm literally like sliding here. The leg is trying to be elevated, but I'm also sliding and I'm also giving a webinar. Oh. Black bar. Oh. What? I'll put a black bar on it. You're gonna put a black bar on my butt? So that it's <laughs> Yeah, censor my butt. No one wants to see that. Right now we're talking about first green days and weekend plays. You guys gotta follow instructions. This is not a free-for-all asking any question webinar. We're going over specific topics. Okay? I'm trying to be organized for once. We got seven more minutes on this specific topic. Weekend plays, first green day plays, ask any questions related to that. You missed your chance to ask questions about promoters. You missed your chance to ask questions about morning panic dip buys. You need to be meticulous if you're gonna be successful. King Mall says to consider buying a first green day stock, it must be volatile or a former supernova. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of one day runners in penny stocks and they just don't, they don't last. Um, you know, you can call them one and done. And when it's a no former supernova, when it's not a big percent gainer, like I see some people say first green day on these stocks that are technically it's a green day where it's up like two, three, five percent, but I'm not interested unless it's a big percent gainer. Do I use level two to open, to determine to sell at the open or wait for the spike? I use level two all the time. Two tools that you should be using nonstop are stocks to trade breaking news and level two. I would not trade without either one of them. 
Do I always sell right at the open on a weekend play? No, but AXTG had already, you know, hit all my goals and more. And when I sold, you know, the Dow was down like five, 600 points. Like it was a nasty uh, day for the, the overall markets. So I did not expect AXTG to have that much upside, especially in an ugly market. Um, you know, for me, remember, if you've seen my trader checklist guide, I have seven indicators. One of those indicators is what is the market doing? What's the market environment? And when the market is crashing and I'm in a play that's up from three to 12 cents in the past week, like I'm not going to be aggressive. I don't care if I miss the top by a little bit. Can I explain level two action on the end of the day for a swing over the weekend? Sure. So, I mean, I wasn't there for the last hour of the day on AXTG, but I saw that it was hanging around nine cents. So when you have a stock that's holding near day highs, near multi-day highs, and it's within shooting uh, range of new highs, that's a very good sign. So again, this is where weekend plays and first green day plays uh, are a little different than my normal trades, where normally if I'm in a stock that's, let's say, breaking out on the day and, you know, it, it's holding near its highs, but it's not breaking out. And let's say, you know, I'm in a stock for, in this hypothetical example, with no catalyst, no weekend in sight. And I just have to decide if I have a solid profit, whether it's a thousand, two thousand, in this case, it was 1700, but I have to decide, should I lock in the profits? What if this stock can't break new highs? as opposed to a stock that's holding near its day highs um, with a news catalyst that is a supernova, a recent supernova, that, that theoretically could spread over the weekend. And that was the decision I had at around 2.45 uh, Friday afternoon. And I knew that I wasn't gonna have Wi-Fi the last hour, so if, let's say it had failed, right? Let's say it hadn't broken nine cents and it comes down to eight cents or seven cents, because remember it's up from two cents just a few days ago. So I'm basically flying blind, which is risky. If it was an intraday trade, like I said, I would have taken the 1700, I would have locked it in, I would have played it safe. But because I specifically got in for the weekend um, and because I had no, you know, no Wi-Fi access, I wasn't able to sell it at 10, 10 and a half or 11. I probably would have sold half just to be safe. Uh, but I forced myself to be a little more aggressive because these weekend plays have been working so well lately. You got to judge the market. What's the overall market doing and what's the environment too. So like the overall market was terrible, but OTC runners have been running for multiple days lately. So those are two different kinds of market environments. It's not just like, oh, is the markets up or not? You got to think about how is the strategy that you're utilizing doing? And how is the overall market doing? And you can be wrong, right? You know, I mean, if I had invested in the overall market Friday afternoon, I would have gotten crushed Monday morning. But instead, I'm in this junky little OTC NFT play and I make 50% over the weekend. R2B2 says, what are your thoughts on all the OTC breakouts recently? So many happening at once. Yeah, welcome to a hot market. You know, I don't know if you remember January, February, March, April, we had a hot market too. Now we're, we're you know, getting another hot market. And there's a lot of plays. Don't feel bad if you miss it. That's why as bad as it is that I missed, you know, ILUS, the dip buy today and CYBL, I'll probably get another chance tomorrow. <laughs> you know, if you missed AXTG's last Friday play, you'll probably get another Friday play this week. That's the beauty of a hot market. There's always something new around the corner. Is the first green day the day it breaks out or is it the next day? First green day is a big percent gainer with ideally a news catalyst that can, you know, keep going. You want to see a big percent gain with ideally a news catalyst. Jay Gata says, my limited understanding of first green day plays is that they're spotted by big percent gainers holding you the day high, closing strong, only spotted end of day. Correct. Um, I mean, so I bought AXTG at around noon. Um, normally, I don't buy a first green day play or, you know, an overnight play at, at around noon. 
but it was because AXTG was breaking new day highs and also I had a crazy schedule. So if you have like a crazy schedule, you know, you, you try to trade around it as best you can. Uh, how does a long-term chart affect your decision to buy first green days? Um, I mean, for me, I, I like former supernovas, stocks that can run again. It's very similar. Like if you're, if you ever get like jacked or like really fit and then let's say, you know, COVID happens or, you know, you, you just eat too much for like Thanksgiving or the holidays for like a month and you like lose all your fitness. It's easier to get your, your fitness back if you have a history of being fit as opposed to somebody who's never been fit at all. And I think that's a good analogy where if a stock has been a big supernova in the past, it can go supernova again easier. That's not to say that, you know, plays can never go supernova, but you're just looking for, uh, you know, signs that, you know, it, it could go again because traders remember it. Short sellers are afraid to short because they remember it last time. And now, uh, you know, buyers remember the last supernova. So, you know, AXTG, if it ever starts running up again, I mean, I tried it today too, trying to think that it could break the new highs. I was wrong today. I had a small loss, but I was buying it today because I remember how good of a trade it was last weekend. Uh, do I usually buy a first green day play into the market close? Yes, that's usually the safest. If I have an open schedule, I often buy first green day plays at like 3.45, 3.50 p.m. Eastern because I want to try to buy a stock that I know is closing high. If you buy a stock at noon and you think that it's going to close high, there's four hours where you could be wrong. My life starts as some of the stocks are turning first green day with volume, but those are all dead from the pattern number seven. Um, I mean, I, I don't really like completely dead stocks. You know, AXTG had already tripled on the week before I bought it. ISCO had already tripled on the week before I bought it, my first $100,000 profit. So I'd rather buy a stock that's a little overextended, but which has momentum in a news catalyst than a stock that has like no momentum and it could easily just be a one and done. Falk Smash says, I missed the last two years of hot markets. If I don't dip by uh, my toes into the, if I don't dip my toes into the OGC, I'm going to sign a document calling myself a certified idiot. Listen, life is long. If you miss a year, two years, five years, there's going to be more opportunities. It's just a question of, are you going to be prepared to capitalize? Um, you know, all of my newest millionaire students, the reason why they're crossing a million is not because they're so smart all of a sudden, it's because they were there in 2017, 2018, 2019, when it was a slower market. So they have the proper perspective. Uh, do first green day stocks tend to spike or panic the next morning? I mean, it's, it's totally different. I mean, AXTG gapped up, then panicked, then spiked. So it did everything. Um, I don't care at what happens after I sell. Um, you know, I'm just in it for the weekend, ideally for the gap up or the morning spike. If it doesn't gap up or morning spike, I don't usually hang it around. Uh, last question on first green days. This sounds like a dumb question as I write it, but is there any tips for anticipating first green days on the watch list the night prior? No, it's not a dumb question, but you have to understand like, you can guess all you want. You can be like, oh, this is gonna be an earnings winner. Oh, this is gonna be a good play. Oh, this news is gonna be good. And that's just your opinion and the market couldn't care less. I want the market to confirm that it's a first green day. You know, we're in a data div driven industry. It's ridiculous that all traders don't share all their trades publicly. If you ever see any trader like bragging about like one screenshot or, or a profit, I encourage you to like tweet at them or message them and be like, you know what? You should show all your trades because I just don't believe you. Um, you know, promoters get away with this without showing all the data and they try to confuse people. A lot of traders who lose overall, but they just show a few winners, they try to get away with it because they're not required to show everything. We're in a data-driven industry. You have the data, so use it. If the stock market rewards a stock with a big percent gain on a day with news, you have that data. You don't need to try to guess which news is meaningful. You know which moves are meaningful based on the data, based on the big percent gains. 
All right, one last question. When you have a trade in a play like AXTG and you're not available to watch or no Wi-Fi, wouldn't you be safer to set up a stop? Um, well, for me, you have to understand, I don't use hard stops because market makers can see them. Secondly, whenever I make a trade, I alert it. So I'm not going to just make a trade to protect myself and then not be there to alert it. Um, so I'm a little different than you. And for me, I don't like using hard stops. You know, I, I have a choice whether I'm going to you know, wing it or not. Also, if you use a stop, you're not guaranteed that price, okay? You can use all the stops you want trying to get out on a morning panic and the market will just laugh at your stop and go blow right past it. So stops aren't the safety measures that you think.